Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to go through my macrame essentials. So a bunch of tools that I feel are really good to have for doing macrame. So the first few things that I'm going to go through are the things that I by far use the most and I can only highly recommend. The first ones are my macrame boards here. So I have both the large one and then the mini one as well. And what these are, they're made like of a foam and you have these little ridges on the side they make it really handy and easy to work with macrame because you just use these little slots to then fasten your cord but then easily you can take it out again and then refasten it if you need to so they're really handy to use and the back of them are just plain both of them here so obviously you can either work on this side and it actually has like a measuring grid so if you want to use that for actual measuring or you can work on the back with just a plain page there. I prefer to normally work on the back because I just measure mine as I go with an actual measuring tape. I don't really like how busy this is, but that's completely personal preference. But I really use these a lot and I can't recommend macrame boards highly enough. And it's really handy I find having both sizes as well. And then the next one is also a macrame board and it's this one. And it's a bit different than the ones that I just showed you. The ones that I just showed you are the ones I mainly use for regular macrame. This one I use pretty much always when I do micro macrame. And it looks like this. So this is one side of it. And the other side looks like that. So it's got this kind of paper part to it. Again, you have some measurements along the edges, which can be quite handy. Again, if you prefer to work on this side, you can do that. And down here, you actually have some other information as well. Both some basic knots, actually. But then also say some different bead sizes and some other measurements as well. So that's quite handy. Personally, I always work on this side though. Again, just because it's less busy and I find it a bit more easy to deal with. But what this is and the difference between the previous ones and this, this is actually more like a cork board of some sort. So you can see it's much harder where the other ones were more like foam of a type, like memory foam. This is actually more like cork. And the reason that I use this mainly for micro macrame, and I really like to use this in general as well, is because this is the one that I use when I'm using pins in my work. And when I'm talking about pins, I mean these pins here. I just keep them in this container. And these are T-pins. And what you also find when you buy these boards here, so this Project Macrame board is more what it's called, you get a few of these pins with it, at least where I bought mine. So the T-pins, and they're just really handy to work, especially for micro macrame work. And the reason that I use these pins on this board, first of all, it's quite sturdy. So when you put the pins in, they'll kind of stay in place where you want them to. And also because with the other macrame boards, I don't really like putting pins in there. That's just my personal choice. You can easily put pins in them. I just prefer not to, because I just don't like the kind of holes that they leave. I prefer to keep my other macrame boards nice and clean. But then that's why I use this board for when I'm using the T-pins. Because this one, I don't mind getting holes in it, as you can see. You have them all here. And also with this, it comes with this plastic layer on it. It's all the way around. It's plastic on the back as well. And it's sealed like that. And you're actually meant to leave that on. The reason for that is if you take it off, what it's made of, so what the board itself is made of, it's just going to come out gradually a little bit and come all over the place and it's going to get into your work so you really do need to leave the plastic on there I know it seems a bit odd but that is what you're meant to do and eventually it will obviously wear so when I've used it for a while for quite a while, it does last a while but as you can see usually you'll keep working in the same area as well so around the middle is where I tend to work and that's what will get used and worn so when I've used it for quite a while and with the pins the plastic will start to eventually come apart and that's when it's time to buy a new one, but that's a good thing because these aren't that expensive, so I don't really have an issue with that. They last quite a while. When they kind of have been used as much as I can use them, I just get a new board then. So I really do recommend this kind of board as well. Unless you don't mind using the pins on your macrame boards, you can easily do that. But I prefer to use this board for especially my micro macrame. So the next couple of things here are kind of some optional extras, but some things that I like to at least have handy when I need it. The first one is some crochet hooks. And this is just a cheap set that I got, so you can easily get just a cheap set like this. You have a range of sizes. Now mainly what I like to use this for, it's the very smallest hook, and it's for something like micro macrame. So I'll take the smallest one, and occasionally I've used it 
for wanting to get through my work. If I need to pull another cord or thread through somewhere, it's really handy having a crochet hook and a really small one. This specific one is a 2mm one, so it's the finest one out of this set. And I have used it on a few projects where I want to get, like I said, my cord or my thread through a specific area where I've already made knots, but it's kind of difficult, if not almost impossible. Whereas using a crochet hook, that makes it a lot easier. And you can quite easily get your cord or thread through but without actually having to compromise your work too much because it's so fine, it'll go through your knot work without compromising it. So it's a nice little extra to have. Another thing that can be quite handy to have sometimes are some tweezers. So this is also just a set that I got with loads of different ones, so sizes and shapes here. As you can see, this is just, you have an angled one for example, it can be quite handy to use, but these are also quite fine in the tips, that's a bit wide that one. We have some really fine ones, for instance that one is really fine and mainly what I kind of use this for sometimes they can help with maybe undoing some knots, especially if it's micromacram because obviously the thread or cord is quite fine and then having some tweezers like this especially with a fine tip to them, it can just help get just in where you've made your knot and try and undo a certain knot because obviously when you've done your knots it gets quite tight as well. So it's hard to sometimes do with your fingers. So using tweezers like this with a fine tip can be really helpful without trying to not damage the cord too much. Because if you do too much, obviously you can reuse your cord. If you've done something you don't like, you can undo it. But if you do that too much, you can kind of damage the cord a bit. So using something like these can help prevent that for too much. Obviously you can still damage it, but it will make it a little bit easier as you can really grab hold of it and get in there with the fine tweezers. So it's just handy to have available to you if you would need it. But also to help undo the knots, I sometimes use the T-pins themselves as well. So like I said, having the tweezers can help sometimes, but I also just use the pins themselves. So just, you have that very fine tip and you just get it in there and kind of try and loosen up the knot. So that's what they are good for as well. So those are kind of the main tools that I would say are really good for macrame. And I would only recommend having these or some of it anyway, that makes it your work a lot easier. The last thing that I just want to show you as well, that I find are quite essential, are some ways to finish off your work after you've made it. Now obviously there's quite a few ways to finish off your work, but some of my favourite ways is to use some professional endings. And by that I mean some kind of pre-made endings that I then finish off my work with, rather than say use macrame to finish it off. I do that as well, it kind of depends on my project what I prefer. But I have these here, these are cord ends, and that's what they look like. And then also ribbon ends. So these two I do really like using to finish off a macrame quite regular. I think it gives a really nice professional finish. So the cord ends here, that's these ones, they look like this where it's kind of from the side, a little U, or from the bottom rather. And what you're supposed to do is then place the ending of whatever you have in there and then you squeeze down the end and secure it in place. Now you can also add a bit of glue and then on the top you have this loop that you then use to add your findings, so your clasp with jump rings and that. So that is if you have more of a smaller end that will fit inside of there and then if you have more of a wide, say a bracelet, a wider bracelet, then I like to use these ribbon ends. So these are just a few examples, they come in loads of different sizes so you can get them specifically to match your project, so if you have a narrow one or one wider one. So they come in loads of different sizes and what these are is kind of from the side, it's almost like a crocodile mouth and you have these little teeth at the end and then what you're meant to do is put it on the end of your piece and then clamp it down. Again you can also add a bit of glue and then the teeth will grab on to your piece as well and then right at the top you have that loop that's again meant to then add your findings with a jump ring in that. So I find these ways to be really nice and professional to finish off your pieces. Now this is just one option obviously, or two rather. I use other ways as well, but I use by far these ones definitely the most and I find they give a really nice and professional finish. So these were then some of my macrame essentials that I really like to have and I only highly recommend if you want to get into your macrame work or you already are doing it. So obviously none of these you absolutely have to have to do macrame, not at all. There's plenty other ways you can do it. It just makes life so much easier and I also feel it helps give a much more professional finish to your pieces. So it's just my recommendations here. Now what I'm going to do as well is if you want to have a look for some of these pieces, 
and you're not quite sure where you can get it, then I'm going to put a link or a few links down in the description box below to where you can get some of these pieces as well or have a bit of a closer look at them. But otherwise, I really hope that this was helpful for you and maybe gave you some ideas for things that can help you to move on with your work. And thank you very much for watching. Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to make these macrame bracelets. And these are the beaded version of my intertwining herringbone macrame bracelet that I did last year. And they look like this. So I've just made these two examples. So it's the exact same technique, as you can see, but because of the different just cord that I've used here, you get two very different looks. And even the beads are the same ones as well. So I've used a white satin cord and then a black one, because I thought that would be a nice neutral background colour for the silver.